Good afternoon, everybody. You guys know what started here at Epcot. Food and Wine Festival. Indeed. I'm excited. I can't wait to try everything. So I brought my cooling towel again. This time I'm gonna get it really wet, like you guys said. Try it again. Yeah, I like this. There's not very many people going in right now. Here we go. Food and Wine Festival. I love Remy in everything. It's amazing. Here's a little bit of a reverse view of the center area here as soon as you walk into Epcot. Check out all of these foods and stuff. I love that they have recreated a bunch of landmarks like the Taj Mahal and the Eiffel Tower using food or food items. All right, so I went into the bathroom, got my coolie towel like super wet, wrung it out a little bit, and now it is it is very cool on my neck, but I do feel wet like just might as well be sweating, right? I don't know, I'm gonna keep going with it, see how it does today. Figured out how to use the towel. So you leave it on your neck until you feel it start to become the same temperature as your body, and then you just flip it over so that the part that was exposed out here is then against your neck, and that cools you off. There is a photo spot here taking photos with the figment, the chef figment topiary. I think he's my favorite. First spot that I came to is called Flavors from Fire, and this is kind of over here behind, hard to explain, Starbucks is just on the other side of this building. I kind of want to try what do we have? These piggy wings. But I don't want anything with bone in. Maybe we won't get anything from here just yet. Maybe the next time we come out. Do definitely want to go inside and get something from Light Lab, which is actually in a different spot than I thought it was. When we did the video where we tasted all the other stuff, it was in a different location altogether. Looks like these are the things that are available. I think that there's also a donut in here that's available for a limited time. But these, I think, are just over here. But let's go into the Light Lab and see what's in there. It's like a Tron rave in here. This is amazing. All kinds of like things on the walls that tell you different things about light and flavors and carbonation and taste. Pretty cool. Also, there is food and wine merchandise in here available. So you can get all of your taste your way around the world and figment stuff. Pretty awesome. You can get your, your figment Figment Chef's hat for $19.99. Oh look, here's all the different things that they call cotton candy around the world. Very interesting. I'm totally gonna get this glow nut, which is, they kind of explained it a little bit here. $3 limited time offer for the glow nut. Doing good, how are you? All right. So this We're gonna make my T equals C squared. This is the vanilla syrup. Put all of that in there. And then we use this contraption. Ooh! Whoa! So here's my glow nut. I'm not really seeing like what's special about it. it just looks like a donut. But here's my crazy drink that took so long to make. It's a non-alcoholic. It's got vanilla flavoring, tonic water, and cotton candy in it. I do really like the theming in here, and I would stay in here all the time if it were up to me. All right, let's try this T equals C squared drink. It's interesting. It really is, because the tonic water, you guys know how tonic water tastes really weird? Like it has like a bitter, almost like grapefruit juice. The sweetness of the vanilla and the cotton candy kind of cut that. They said make sure you stir it a lot, so I'm gonna try stirring it. Yeah, much better, much better. Oh, that's really good actually. One thing that I'm a little bit disappointed in is they don't have any silverware in here, and I always make a mess when I eat because I have my mustache, and I would normally eat this with a fork and knife, but I'm gonna have to tear it apart with my hands. Ooh. Tastes like a donut. <laughs> Nothing real special about it. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I might take this glow nut outside and see if the color changes on it because they're saying that it glows a little bit underneath the black lights around here. I mean, sort of. Like, it is less exciting out here, but it's still just a donut. <laughs> I do have to admit, for $3, that uh, glow nut, probably the most amount of food I'm gonna get today for the lowest price. Ooh, let's have a look over here at Next Eats and see what we can get over in this area. Loaded mac and cheese actually sounds real good. I'm gonna wait though until Jen's here to have that with me because yeah, that sounds real good. There it is. Yeah, I think Jen will like that a lot. So we'll wait until she comes to give that a try. Oh, here's a new booth that says introduced in 2007. This one's called Earth Eats. I'm assuming by the name you just eat dirt. Oh no, it's not. It's just stuff from the earth. So like, you know, zucchini, 
I don't know. I'm gonna try this grilled beef skewer. And I do have to admit, if I had not eaten that donut, I probably would have gotten this peanut butter and white chocolate mousse, because that sounds real good. There's my grilled beef skewer with a romaine and feta salad underneath. And then because I'm an annual pass holder, when I bought this, they gave me an annual pass holder pin. Pretty cool. I dropped my first piece of beef on the ground. Darn it, because I was trying to get it off the skewer so that I could give it a try, and I just it just popped right off. Hmm. Has a really good flavor. There's a piece of fat like right in the center of it, so it's very chewy. I feel like it's like a skirt steak or a flank steak or something. Like, not the best. Did it say on there like flat iron steak or something like that? I'm sure it did. But it's still good. Like it has good flavor to it. It just kind of takes a lot to eat it. All right, as far as the beef skewer goes, would not recommend that last piece of beef that I just got. A huge, huge, tough piece of fat in it. It was like chewing on like plastic, basically. And then for whatever reason, they use romaine in the salad and romaine, beef, like the beef flavors, they don't go together. And then you add in the feta cheese and then it really doesn't go together. I do not eat seafood, so the next time that we come with Jen, we will definitely be trying some of this seafood here at Coastal Eats, specifically these seared scallops, because those are one of the things that were available at the preview that we went to that I wasn't able to try that everybody said was really good. I believe they're calling this section the culinary corridor. We're gonna go to there in just a little bit. First, we're gonna go across the way here, past Mouse Gear, over to the Festival Center, see what's in there. Back behind Spaceship Earth here, they have a lot of PhotoPass photographers set up, and they have a special like a photo pass spot here where you can take a picture with Remy in front of his cake and the sign that says International Food and Wine Festival. Came into uh, Mouse Gear and I noticed that they have a Star Wars section set up here with Porgs, Porgs galores. I also found lots and lots of International Food and Wine Festival merchandise and they have a Food and Wine Festival's cookbook where you can try to make stuff that they make at Epcot and uh, California Adventure during their Food and Wine Festivals or their food festivals. Oh, pretty cool. This is a, a drink. It seems like there's just a lot of pictures in here. Can't really find very many things as far as... Oh, here we go. Here's stuff to make. That beef skewer that I just ate. And that book is $25. Here's another view of all of the merchandise. Nothing really sticks out at me as something that I'd be like, Oh, I would totally buy this. It's not really, I don't know, the colors are kind of not my favorite thing. One thing that I've noticed about this towel is that you have to flip it over kind of a lot. And I feel like it's already dried out too much. Like I might have to re-wet it again. And I've only been here for 30 minutes. Just passing by the now closed Universe of Energy and heading over to the Festival Center, which is the old Wonders of Life Pavilion back here. Into the Festival Center, old Wonders of Life Pavilion, which used to contain Cranium Command, uh, the making of me, there's the making of you, the making of me, and Body Wars, which none of those are open anymore, but they were all really fun and I miss them a lot. Dang, I miss it so much. So, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a festival shop. There is an international cafe, stuff like that. Uh, it kind of just looks like this is where they do a lot of the information and presentations and stuff like that. Here in the festival shop, lots and lots of artwork. More of those books and books by other famous chefs like Mario Batali and people that are on the chew which is uh, filming here, I think this week. And mostly that's it, here at least. Heading down here, the Intermissions Cafe. Basically just a little spot for you to get a little snack while you're waiting in between the presentations. They have a whole set of merchandise here devoted to brews around the world for the Food and Wine Festival. And look, you can see all the different types of glasses that they use for drinking beer around the world. And then you can even get a growler that you can fill up at your local place where you would fill up your growler. They don't fill it up here. And then over here in this other festival shop is a lot of the merchandise that we showed you at the preview uh, with Remy and as far as like tea towels and coffee mugs and the shirts. And then over here is all of the figment stuff. I think I really like the figment oven mitt. Pretty neat. Oh, I like this. Frame poster for display only. But you can frame it. I guess you can, oh, you can buy the poster here and then get it framed for $219. I like Figment a lot, but I would rather have regular merchandise with Figment on it rather than just food and wine merchandise. Ooh, this stuff is nice though, but I think that this all was available at D-Living recently before they changed it over like I showed you guys in yesterday's vlog. Same thing with this stuff. 
This is all just like Mickey and Disney themed cooking things. You can see they're doing a demonstration here so and that chef is up there making go something. To the store to buy tuna. Yes. We would buy it frozen. Yeah, so you then, would buy it frozen some places like Whole Food in the mm -hmm. case they have like the ahi tuna. And then we would just thaw it in the refrigerator. Yes, you thaw it in the refrigerator. A lot of the tuna packages will say do not thaw in package. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you're reading those instructions. You can take it out, just leave it in your fridge, let it thaw overnight until you use it the next day. Oh, I guess I can get a, a sample of Giardelli if I go in there. I'm okay, you know? Oh. And they have a fuel rod switch out station over here too. Right next to the Giardelli experience. They're showing a movie in here called Seasons of the Vine. Pretty interesting stuff. Nobody's in there. They also have a Cutco demonstration area here for the, the world's finest cutlery knives. I've never used a Cutco knife, have you guys? Looks like they're setting up for a wine demonstration over here. Looks like this is the area where maybe you get a pass holder button like I got and maybe set up or register for the events, like the, the speaking events that I was showing you. They have other bigger buttons too. I wonder what that is. All right, I'm gonna get in line. We'll see. So here's my exclusive button that I got for being an annual pass holder here for the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. They also have another area here where not only can you get food and wine merchandise, but you can literally buy wine, like entire bottles of wine. And they've got a little special section in here where you can watch the chew. I don't know why anybody would sit here and watch the chew but you can. Well, now that we've seen that, let's head into World Showcase and eat some more food. It's actually kind of funny, something that I just noticed, like they don't use this building 90% of the time. They just have it open for Food and Wine Festival for that festival center, like I said. So they don't upkeep anything around it. And you can tell that this was starting to get very algae filled and still is algae filled, but it looks like they just threw like a bunch of chlorine tablets in there. Like, all right, do your magic chlorine. So this is where I thought that the uh, light lab area was gonna be, but this is only craft beers. Let's go have a look inside. Here's what they have. You guys know any of those beers? I know MIA. I know a lot of them actually, but they also have a zesty cheeseburger and cheddar cheese macaroni handwich. Okay, I'm getting that. And a scotch egg. Looks like they've started decorating for Epcot 35, the 35th anniversary of Epcot, because we're heading into the Odyssey restaurant here. It's pretty neat, but I like this. I really like this design because it brings me back. It brings me back to old Epcot. There is a lot of stuff for the Epcot 35 inside of the Odyssey restaurant here where you can get a lot of craft beer and then they have all kinds of decorations and it looks like a slideshow going on over there. Showing past and present Epcot, like it just showed Maelstrom and now of course it's showing current, like the Royal Summer House with uh, Anna and Elsa meet and greet. Oh, and look here, they're building the China Pavilion. This is neat. I could sit here and watch this all day. I'm liking this. There is like an entire display for Epcot 35. And we've got some concept art for World Showcase. This is neat. A nice fancy Mexico Pavilion photo. It looks like they've got photos of all of the pavilions. We've got some concept art for the Royal Summer Hoos. Here they are doing some, uh, some sculpting for the Germany Pavilion and some sculpting for the Italy Pavilion. Here they are working on American Adventure. This is awesome. Then of course, Japan, some Morocco concept art. Concept art for the new France Pavilion that will have the Ratatouille ride. Adding in the phone box for the UK Pavilion. Look at that, there's like nothing there. This is awesome. So that was all World Showcase, and now we're going to the section for Future World. Yes, some Herb Ryman artwork. There's a photo from the opening of the Living Seas. Construction photo from when they were doing the Land Pavilion, and you can see them working on Spaceship Earth back here. This is pretty awesome. Oh, and uh, World of Motion. There you can see where we just were, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. Looked a lot better back in the day. There's World of Motion, which is now Test Track, but World of Motion was one of my favorite rides. And you can see here it is. This is Test Track 1.0, which is what it used to be. Now it's at Test Track 2.0. I like Test Track 1.0 better because there was a crash test dummies and everything, but I like World of Motion better than Test Track. And then here's the concept art for the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride that's going to be taking the place of uh, Ellen's Energy Adventure. 
Look at Groot and Rocket down there. And it comes with this for 450? Yes, sir. Wow, I'll take one. This is kind of ridiculous. For 450, I got Sprite with Bobas in it, and it's in this crazy flashing cup. Man, it's like uh, mesmerizing to watch. I also got this Handwich, which, I don't know, it looks pretty good. Kind of reminds me of the cones at DCA. So the big wrapper they give it to you in is kind of deceiving. It's really not that big of a thing, but you eat everything. It's like a, an edible cone with macaroni and cheese in it. The original idea was to show you me eating that handwich. And then I took one bite of it and it was the messiest thing that I've ever eaten because the shell is too tough. So you don't bite through the shell, it just squishes everything out. And then it got all over my face and all over the place and all over my hands. So I couldn't have the camera out to show you it was delicious, but it was definitely very difficult to eat. And then my uh, drink cup is not as exciting outside because it's super bright out here and you can barely see the lights. But the Sprite and the boba really go well together. It's really funny to me. That's like, what are you drinking there? It's, it's just Sprite with boba in it. Like nothing really special about it, but they put it in a fun cup. Of course, now I just have a cup that I have to carry around with me for the rest of the day. There's a way to turn it off here on the bottom though. Just came from the Odyssey restaurant and here we are heading into World Showcase. Came over to the Disney Traders area and I noticed this is where you can get the map for the uh, Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak. And basically you're out looking for little tiny Remy's all around World Showcase. And if you find them all, you get a special prize. The prize you get is a little Remy keychain. That's pretty neat. One of four. Towards the entrance to World Showcase now, where most people come from, you can see Spaceship Earth off in the distance right there. But we're turning around, and there is a Mickey Topiary here grilling. He's making some kebabs. And you can kind of see there's a little like stage-like area over there. That is normally where they are going to film the chew. So normally, when I come to Food & Wine, we make a right there and head towards Hawaii because I love the pork sliders. I'm feeling kind of good. Like the few things that we've had kind of filled me up for lunch. And it's really hot out, so I don't know if we're gonna get anything else unless I can find something that's like fresh and like refreshing. Fresh and refreshing. I think those are two different things, right? So we're just gonna head this way. Maybe make it around halfway of World Showcase because we don't have too much time here today, but we'll see what we can find. Maybe we'll find something that is refreshing and cool and good for a hot summer day like this. So we're starting to farm fresh here. Not seeing anything, although that crispy chicken does sound really good. I do like the style of the Farm Fresh booth though, because it's like, I think it used to be called Florida Fresh and now it's called Farm Fresh. I don't know, it looks very Floridian. Let's have a look at one of the older booths, Greece, which was established in 1996. Looks like they've got some loaded Greek nachos, which actually sounds really good. And it looks like it's vegetarian. Oh yeah, everything here is, well, not everything, sorry. The taste of grease is not vegetarian, but most of the stuff here is vegetarian. Mmm. I have an advertisement for Eat to the Beat, and here is some of the schedule. Right now, Delta Ray is playing. I don't know who Delta Ray is. Yeah, a lot of good, good bands that'll be playing. There's a lot of people. Dennis D. Young from Styx. Holy cow. This is a lot of people. Wow. There's another new booth for this year, Thailand. And they got some marinated chicken. Ooh. Seared shrimp and scallop cape. Wow, that sounds pretty interesting. Oh look, there's a Remy right there on top of the Mexico booth. We found one. So now you guys have a little sneak peek for the squeak and find and squeak for Remy. You guys can win those keychains. Here's the Mexico booth, which is always here, but uh, they have a special menu for food and wine. That ribeye taco sounds real good. What is this? Cajeta? Cajeta? I don't know. What is it? It sounds interesting and delicious. Standing outside of the Mexico Pavilion, and I thought for sure the tequila bar would be open by Food & Wine. Not yet. I'm gonna take a little second here and cool off in the Mexico Pavilion. Ride the Grand Fiesta Tour. Definitely one of the best ways to cool off in all of Epcot. Or is it? I just can't stop singing. My cell phone up here said be ringing. Kinda looks like his hat is gonna fall off. It's shaking around so much. Fireworks look really good today. We samba, we shout, I caramba. I don't know. I think I've really figured out this cooling towel. You have to re-wet it all the time, you have to flip it over a bunch, and you have to go inside of air conditioning every once in a while to really cool it down, and then you flip it over when you come outside. 
It's cool, it's nice. Here out in front of uh, the Frozen Pavilion, in the Puffin Roost, they're hosting Larry Dotson, who I would imagine is an artist for Disney. The China Pavilion, you got a lot of a lot of stuff that seems very hearty and not good for a hot day, like take for instance black pepper shrimp. And I did just overhear that they are out of duck for today, or not for today, for right now. Seems like they are selling more than they thought they would. They're making more back of the house right now to bring out, but they're all out for the moment. Here's another new booth for India. Warm Indian bread, curry. It looks like a lot of this stuff is uh, vegetarian too. Looks kind of good, but not seeing anything here just yet. I do see this drink does look good though, this mango drink. Based just solely on the amount of time that we have here today, I think we're gonna make it about halfway around, just over to the America Pavilion. Then we gotta head home, but that's good because that means we'll have to come back another day. Plus, this was kind of a bit of like an exploratory trip to see what they had and what looked interesting. And then next time we'll come and like really get a lot of food. Oh, the Africa Pavilion, which has been here for quite a while. Doesn't really, oh, we had this. We had this Ethiopian stew when we were doing the preview. It doesn't look like anything, like I'm saying, I'm still looking for something cool and refreshing. Right across from the Africa Pavilion is a festival outpost and it looks like they sell what is called Rinse Bath and Body Company, made in Monroe, Georgia. Looks like uh, soaps, homemade soaps, and all sorts of other bath materials. And then of course, Disney washcloths. By the Germany Pavilion, they've got the Brewers Collection where you can get all kinds of beers, German beers. Looks pretty good. I do have a little bit of a complaint though because the beer flight used to be four beers and now every flight that I'm seeing there's only three beers. The decorated gingerbread. And of course, yeah, the beer flights are only three beers now. Over at the Germany Pavilion next. And I remember having this bratwurst last year and it was very, it was a very small bun, but a very large piece of bratwurst, I think. Yeah, and lots of beer. So you can get some of the same beers over here that you can get over at the other place. Or no, it looks like you can get different beers here. So you can get lots and lots of German beers between the Germany Pavilion and the Brewers Collection. Or if it's beer you're looking for and German beer at that, you can just come over to the actual Germany Pavilion and get a full-size beer rather than the little samples over at the Germany booth. Another new booth is Spain. This is another one of those ones that we were unsure of what it was when we first saw it. Charcuterie in a cone. Well, that sounds interesting. Hmm. I wonder if I should just, let, let's get that. We'll go ahead and get the charcuterie in a cone because it sounds real interesting. Some of the shrimp and mussels that they have. So let's check out this charcuterie in a cone. I thought it was gonna be another one of those edible cones, but it's not. It does look delicious though. Lots of meats and olives and cheeses. Oh my. So it looks like, well, there's like meats all throughout, but my uh, prosciutto is here on top with some cheese. Oh yeah, this is good. I would eat this again. Very tasty. Very tasty indeed. Whatever that was. Whatever meat this is, I think it's like a salami. Salami cube or something. That's good. That's really good. It has got officially hot. I like that they'll usually have like trash cans out for you to eat on. But you can't eat on these like cardboard trash cans they have set out here. These are not going to last in the rain either. The second that a rainstorm pulls through, trash cans are going to turn to mush. Italy, which has I think pretty much the same stuff that they normally have. Calamari, penne pasta, polenta, cannolis. Just about reached our halfway point where I have to call it a day because one, it's too hot. And then two, I gotta get home to Jen and Bandit. And uh, we'll make another video with the other half of World Showcase and all the booths and stuff like that. Also, it's like I need to find something refreshing, especially after that charcuterie board and like the salt from the olives and stuff like that. Although it was delicious, it's a hot day. I know that they're like Food and Wine Festival, fall flavors, but if you're starting it September 1st, it's still hot in Florida in September. Like, what is it? It's it's 92 degrees outside in the shade. Puts you out in the sun, you're in the high, like low 100s. It's very hot outside. So I'm gonna try to find like a cool, refreshing beverage and then call it a day. Did notice that this Joffrey's out next to American Adventure has some fall uh, coffee flavors. At the Hops and Barley Market, which is over by the American Adventure of the American Pavilion. They've got a lobster roll, a smoked beef brisket, which sounds delicious. Not gonna get it this time. That is something that I'm definitely like putting in my, my brain for next time. Well, there it is. I made it all the way to the American Adventure Pavilion. We're heading out now. You know what though? Coming up on the Japan Pavilion and everybody always says that the Frushi is good. 
So we might end up getting, wait, there's no Frushi? What? I thought that that was here. Oh man, I was gonna get that because it seemed like it would cool me off. At the International Gateway, which is between France and the UK over there, there's a little area here that is for food and wine. I kind of like this one a lot. That's a band called Quick Step. They're out here on, like every once in a while. There's a sign back there that tells what time they are out. But man, I love it. Like I could listen to that kind of music all day long. It's very relaxing. And of course, they're in the, the UK pavilion area of Epcot. We can, uh, we'll show you guys more of these booths, of course, the food and wine booths, the next video. Like take, for instance, we're passing by Ireland right now. And like I said, we're out of time for today, but the next time we're definitely gonna come the other way around World Showcase. Heading out down the culinary corridor, which we didn't get to this time. I know I've said this a bunch, but we're definitely gonna come back and show you guys way more of the Food and Wine Festival. This is an islands one, like there's the Dominican Republic right there. Oh man, that looks awesome. This makes me wanna go on vacation rather than eat like a ton of food. Food and Wine definitely has a lot of booze this year, and I feel like there's a lot more than there has been in past years. So I'm gonna plan on maybe at least two days Maybe even three. There's a lot of food to eat. I am pretty slow going around the theme parks, like stopping and looking at all the artwork and the Odyssey restaurant and stuff like that. So you probably get through the entire thing a lot faster than I did. But if you're taking your time looking at a lot of stuff, it takes a while. There's a little tiny side note over here to the right of Spaceship Earth on the way out. This used to be where you would get on or buy tickets for the express park to park bus. No longer available, no longer offered. So short lived. I don't know if anybody ever used it. I didn't because it was a little bit expensive and I usually just go to one park a day, but I'm wondering if anybody ever did actually use it. Well, that'll do it for us here from Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. We're definitely coming back many, many more times. Gonna eat a lot more food because there's a lot that we didn't get to. Do have to admit, like coming early in the afternoon, there are the crowds are lower, but it's definitely way, way hotter. So plan on that. I don't know if you wanna stay cool, but don't mind standing in line come later in the evening time still hot still hot not not like it's cold or anything like that but it's definitely way hotter in the middle of the day but the lines are less so with that being said we are off and i will see you guys tomorrow now it's time to pay the price been carrying this cup around all day 